Hi there, my name is Vince from Mr. Telephone, and today we're going to be talking about how to wire up a CATS 5E network socket. So let's say if you're doing some uh, work in your house and you're sick of the Wi-Fi, not getting through the thick walls, you want to do a wired connection. Now you can just do a wired connection where you put plugs onto both ends, but it's a nice job to terminate it onto wall sockets, and then you can get your little patch leads from the wall sockets that go into your piece of equipment. Now a patch lead is made with stranded core cable, and the wire that will attach to the back of the socket is solid core cable. And the idea of this is, stranded core cable is nice and flexible to go from the wall to your Xbox, your PlayStation, your PC, your laptop, whatever you're connecting up, your smart TV, it's uh, nice flexible. And then if it ever goes faulty, all you've got to do is unplug it and buy yourself another one for uh, a couple of quid. So uh, it's, a nice, it's a nice job to fit the face plates on. Now you can have them mounted straight onto the wall if you were to have an electrical back box or I sell kits where I do these little surface back boxes. So this way you can run it uh, you know you can you can run it along the skirting board and then it can come up into the socket and it's just a, a nice a nice way of having a nice permanent feature rather than just having a cable with plugs connected on the end. This is a bit of a, a bit of a better job. So what you need is you're gonna need some cable. Obviously for this video I'm just having a short length of cable. You're gonna need a faceplate, a back box and a patch lead to go from the faceplate to your piece of equipment. Now in this uh, in this example here I've already terminated one end with a plug but the kits I normally sell normally come with two faceplates one for this end and one for this end and then two patch leads. So you can plug one patch lead into your router which will go to the faceplate and then on the other faceplate you would do another patch lead which will go to your, your PlayStation or your PC, whatever you're connecting up. But in this instance a lot of people do like to do it this way. They like to have the plug going into their router and then in their bedroom or their back room, wherever they're putting their, their extra point to go, they like to terminate it onto a wall socket. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do here. Now, let's just get rid of that there. Let's start from start from fresh. Okay, so what you need to do is obviously you need to run your cable. Now, when you're running your cable, you'll have to uh, you have to cable clip it. Normally, you will put the cable clips a hammer's length apart. So if you, normally a hammer's about so big, about a foot, and you would put one cable clip here and one cable clip here, and you would run it along. Try to keep it away from mains electric wiring because it can induce noise onto the cable which can affect the data. So try to run it on its own. If you do have to cross a mains cable, go so at a right angle. Don't run it parallel, pretend this is a mains cable, don't run it parallel along it because you will get noise inducing onto it. If you have to go near it, cross over it at a right angle, but the best thing is to stay, stay away from mains cabling. Okay, so what you do is after you've run the cable, you would then need to terminate it. So we've got our back box here. If you were coming straight through the wall, if you were using external cable, you could come through the hole in the back. But on this one, we're gonna pretend that the cable's coming along the skirting board or up from under the floorboards and we would go through this hole here. You have various knockouts to put it through. So we put it through the back box. Now we need to strip it back. So I'm using a cable stripper. You don't have to use one of these because most cables have a drawstring in. But I'm going to use a cable stripper. Strip back a nice amount that you can work with, so about an inch and a half. Okay, and now I've snapped that off there, so I know I haven't damaged any of the cables. This particular, any of the conductors inside, this particular cable has quite a nice, quite a nice solid sheath on it, so it's, it's nice and easy to cut. Sometimes the softer the sheath, the harder it is to cut. But as you can see, I've got a drawstring now. In this instance, I don't need to use it because I've used a, a proper stripper cut to the, the correct size. But if you've just done it roughly with a Stanley knife or with some side cutters, then you're gonna wanna use the drawstring just in case you've damaged the conductors on the inside. So make a tiny little cut to get it started. And then wrap the drawstring round a screwdriver. If you wrap it round your finger, it can sometimes cut it. But as you can see, I'm just running it down the cable now nice and easy, and I know I haven't damaged any of the wires on the inside. So you can use it two ways, you can use it like that, or you can use one of these. Cut off the drawstring and the sheath, and there we have the, the wires, and I know they're not damaged, so cut away the wires that could be damaged, which are the ones up here, 
And you know now, because these ones have been done with the drawstring, you know they're not damaged. Right, so that's it there. So now we're going to terminate it onto the socket. There's, when you look at a socket closely, you will see it's got A and B marked on it. So I'm, you're going to have to come in real close now to this. Can you see? Let me just start on. Yeah. Can you see the A and B markings? There's all the different colour codes on there. Yeah. So if you're doing a new point, then you need to do... Well, you can do A or B, but just keep it the same. So if you've done B on both sides, if you've done B on one side, you need to do B on the other side. If you've done A on one side, you need to do A on the other side. Now, the difference between the A and the B is the orange and the green are swapped over. So if you were to look at the blue and brown on this diagram, they're both exactly, they're both exactly the same. But when you look at the orange and green, you can see that they're on the A, it starts with the green, and on the B, it starts with the orange. Now, you will need to double check what your patch leads are or wh which, whatever you're connecting up. So if you're into, if you're in a house at the moment and you're adding an extra point, see what, uh, see what they've done at the moment. And if they've used the A, copy the A, but make sure you do A on both sides. If they've used the B, copy the B. If it's new work and there's no wiring already involved, then just, just do B. Everybody does B nowadays. So for example, on this one here, I've wired this up to the B configuration. So that's T568B. You can also get T568A. It's basically the A and B. So I've wired us up to B because we've started on this side with the oranges. If we were to start on this side with the greens, then we would have to wire the socket up, the faceplate up, to the A. But because we've started with the orange, then we have to wire the faceplate up to the B. If I was to get it the wrong way round and wire that up to the A, and this is wired to the B, it would become a crossover cable. And it's, it's not going to work between things like your router and your PC. So just uh, wire it up nice and straight. So that's something to be aware of. But on new work, just copy B everywhere. So on the B configuration, you've got uh, white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, white green, white brown, sorry, beg your pardon, <laughs> white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, brown. Okay, so but on the sockets, they're always labelled up for you, so it's nice and easy. Now, you will have to double check the socket you have. Don't just copy what I've done here, because a lot of sockets are wired up differently, just the way they're wired on the inside. But if it says to do white green, do white green. You know, if you're, if you're copying the B and it says to do blue, then do blue. Don't just think, oh, well, on the video it started on white green, so I have to do it. You have to copy the diagram on the actual socket you get because they can be wired differently on the inside, uh, just depending on how they've uh, how they transformed the, the, uh, the IDC to the pin. So just copy the socket. So I'm going to wire this up now, and then in stages I lift it up to the camera so you can see. So the idea is we don't want to wire up. You might want to zoom in a bit more on this one now. You don't want to wire, you don't want to have it too loose. So don't connect the wires here and have all this sheath cut back here. You want to untwist as little as possible. So to begin with, I don't even need this amount stripped back. So I'm going to cut it to around there because otherwise I'm just going to be untwisting all day. Now, because I'm using the B color code, I need to start with the orange up top and then the white orange below. So I'm using the B, so I'm going to start with the orange up top and then the white orange below. So I'm just copying the diagram. So what you'll do is, to begin with, just unwrap the orange. It doesn't matter that you've unwrapped them because remember, they're gonna be twisted in the sheath here. So if these bits are unwrapped, it doesn't matter because they're all gonna be twisted in here. So we wanna keep the unwrapping to a, to a minimum. So I'll do a few of these and then I'll show you, show you what I've done. connected the white orange and the orange and you have to use an IDC punch down tool also known as a crone tool a telecom tool and basically you can use a professional version like this or you can use the punch down little cheap plastic versions that cost a quid or so now on the cheap plastic ones they don't cut the cables off the ends the wires at the ends. so when you punch it in you're physically going to have to cut the wires this side now, the reason you have to cut the wires is because in theory, they could if they were left long, they could touch each other and short out. So that's why you cut them. But if you get yourself a proper tool, then it, it does the cutting for you. Now, if you can just zoom in here, I'm just gonna show you how the tool works. 
you put your wires on the inside here and there's a little shoulder here. The shoulder on the IDC block is where the cutter goes. So on these sockets, the wires go down the middle and then they come out and this side here gets cut. So don't put the IDC in that way round because you're cutting the wrong side. You put the IDC in that way round and when you go into it, it will cut. You can probably see the scissors there cutting the imaginary wire because it's not there at the moment. So that's how you will insert your IDC tool. Now there's very, very little room, so be gentle when you're pushing the wires down, but do it firmly and do it straight. Don't do it at an angle, because if you punch down at an angle, all you're gonna do is you're gonna widen up the metal V and it won't make a good connection or it might not connect at all. So always do it nice and straight down. So if you can, rest it on something. Or if you can't rest it on anything, rest it on your hand nice and firmly and go down nice and straight. So I'm just gonna wire up a few of the others now. Next I'm going to wire up the blues. So now we can see that I've wired up that side. And now I'm going to wire up this side and I'll show you all at the end. And as you can see, I'm keeping the untwisting to a minimum. So the wires are still twisted, it's just the very ends where they're untwisted. Now on this socket, the browns are next up top. And then the greens. So, there we have it, that's all wired up now. And then it's quite a nice job just at the end just to get a cable tie to cable tie the sheaf just in case the cable does get yanked. It's not going to affect the performance, you don't have to do a cable tie, but it's just a nice way to finish off the job. I'm just going to pop the cable tie on. Cut off the tail of the cable tie. And there we go. So as you can see, you've got minimum, minimum amount of untwisting. And uh, all the wires are pushed fully home. They're pushed right to the bottom of the metal V, so make sure they go right the way in. There's no wires that haven't been cut on the ends. And it's a nice, uh, nice neat job that's not going to give you any bother. So what we'll do is then screw it back into the socket. And you can see it's been cable tied as well. So now we'll just quickly screw it back into the socket. And then I'll show you do a quick test on it to make sure that it's got continuity between all the pins. That's that one. That one. So this is our cable tester here. So we plug one into there, and then we need to plug a patch lead into this side. And hopefully now when we turn it on, it will go across all the pins. So it should be go down, it should flash between one to eight. Yeah, as you see there now, I've got a cross wire somewhere because the one and two is crossed. I don't know if you can see that on the light. Let's turn that off. So we do a quick bit of fault finder now and see why, why we've got the crossover. So let's have a look here. It was one and two that was crossed, wasn't it? So the oranges are straight there. I've done white orange to orange. So let's open up the socket now and quickly see, this is why it's good to test using one of those testers, they're only about, you get them for under £5 from eBay and uh, eBay and Amazon, so it's always good to get one of them because then you can see if you've done something wrong, because if you've installed this and then you're, you, might think that there's a, you might think that there's a problem. So let's have a little look here, what went wrong. Yeah, and that's what I've done wrong. I should have done orange to the top and white orange to the second one. But what I've actually done is, I've done white orange to the top and orange to the second one. So I wasn't concentrating and I've connected up the wrong one. So I'm just gonna swap that over. Now that's what this is handy for. On the chrome saw you have a little hook that you can push out and you can just unhook the wires. There, out goes the orange and out goes the the white orange, and now let's swap them around the right way, make sure we get it the right way around this time. Push that back in, don't stab yourself on that. So 
So always push that back in. Punch that down. Punch that down. Right, now we've put that the right way around. So we've got orange up top and white orange there. Hopefully now when we put it back together, we will see that it all uh, connects up correctly. Pop that in there, pop that in there. And this time, hopefully, we will have continuity between all the pins. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's right. Now let me slow that down a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's nice and straight, they're not crossed over. So you've seen before we crossed over. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. It's, uh, it's straightforward. Don't rush it and do what I do and cross the wires. Double check the wires that you're pushing into the connections to make sure it's right and then uh, you won't have any problems. So uh, yeah, I sell, I sell all these things on my eBay shop. I, I sell network kits that have it all. They've got the patch leaves, they've got two back boxes, two sockets, cable, clips to cable. They've got everything. So just type in network kit. I do internal, external, in all different lengths. If you need them, go to www.mrtelephone.co.uk. That will link you through to the mymatevince.com website. And then from there, you will see the little telephone man that you can click on, or there's a link to the eBay shop and then you'll be able to find everything. Okay, thanks all for your time. Uh, please subscribe if you, uh, if, you, if you like the video and give, uh, give, it, give a thumbs up if you like the video. Okay, that's great, thank you, take care, bye now.